George Alt painted pictures, not just any rural scene, not just any barn, but some sort of mystic spot in the world that no matter how small and seemingly unimportant it may appear to be, is yet given a great deal of weight, of emotional power uh, that we would do well to look at. Alt had some success in the 1920s as a painter of New York scenes, abandoned or isolated lonely street scenes, lower Manhattan, um, done in a very geometric way. But starting in the late 1920s and early 1930s, Alt experienced a number of personal misfortunes. His father died. His two older brothers both committed suicide. And for these and other reasons, he increasingly became reclusive, irritable, mean-spirited. In 1937, he moved to the small town of Woodstock, New York, with his companion, Louise Jonas. And there in Woodstock, Alt began to make paintings of lonely scenes of rural life, which Alt invested with a great deal of pathos and emotion, which continues to be palpable, present to us today. Alt's pictures depend so heavily on the capacity of the slope of a barn roof or the angle of a telephone pole or a telephone wire to shape and control a world that would otherwise be out of control. He felt this for personal reasons, certainly, but also because he had a deep sense of the destructiveness and disintegration of the entire globe as he felt it during that era, the 1940s. In my opinion, when we look back at the 1940s now, especially the war years, we tend to think of it, strangely enough, in terms of uh, very positive and optimistic visions. We think of, say, Alfred Eisenstadt's famous VJ Day kiss photograph, or we think of Bing Crosby's Accentuate the Positive, or we think of other similarly uh, upbeat um, icons of the culture of that time. Alt's vision, like that of some of the filmmakers from that time, is by contrast so much about darkness, so much about solitude, so much about reflection, and it gives voice to a quieter, more contemplative, and somehow more deeply aware art that makes us look at the 1940s anew 